Welcome back. We're talking about the latest round of violence between Palestinians and Israelis. Hanan Ashrawi is a member of the PLO Executive Committee and the first woman elected to the Palestinian National Council. She joins us from Ramallah. Dr. Ashrawi, first, let me get your response uh, to the uh, Swedish move to recognize Palestine as a state. Yes, I think this is a very positive move. It's very significant. It's moving beyond just verbal statements by the European countries, European Union, uh, on issues of the two-state solution and the need to have a peace based on parity. And it's moving into the realm of concrete action, of recognizing the Palestinian state and trying in some ways to level the playing field, given the fact that we have a situation of occupier and occupied. Tell me how this helps the process in concrete terms. How does this move towards a Palestinian state? This helps a great deal because when you talk about a two-state solution, you are talking about several principles. On the one hand, the inadmissibility of the acquisition of territory by uh, force, the war crime of settlement activity. You're talking about recognizing UN resolutions, applicability of international law. And at the same time, you have an occupier, Israel, who's busy destroying the Palestinian state but paying lip service only to uh, the two-state solution while it's destroying the very foundations. So concretely, when an, uh, a state recognizes Palestine, it elevates relations, it recognizes its borders, its capital, its people, and the right to self-determination of the Palestinian people. And it clearly sends a signal to Israel that this is not a disputed territory up for grabs, that Israel can steal land and build settlements and annex Jerusalem and everything else, that there is an international community that respects international law and that is empowering the Palestinian state by establishing official diplomatic relations. Okay, I want to move on to some recent events which have inflamed tensions yet again between Israelis and Palestinians. At the end of October, the Israelis blocked Muslim worshippers from going to the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, which is considered Islam's third holiest site. Uh, the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, called this an act of war. Well, it's very clear that Israel is trying to provoke uh, religious war, uh, sectarian uh, confrontations, uh, declaring a holy war, if you wish, because when you target other people's holy sites and when you try to superimpose on other people's sacred and religious places and heritage, uh, your own and take it exclusively as yours, then you are clearly provoking serious reactions. You are provoking not just the Palestinian people, not just the Muslims, but the, the whole uh, world, the Arab world, the Islamic world, uh, and of course the Christian world, because the uh, Haram al-Sharif, the noble sanctuary, for centuries is a Muslim holy site, and it is a place where, uh, that is held extremely sacred by the uh, Muslims. And it is part of our cultural heritage as Palestinians as well, and as Arabs and Muslims, and, and Christians too. The Jerusalem Post is reporting that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel accused President Abbas of violating a pledge that President Abbas made only days earlier that he would calm tensions. According to uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, he told his cabinet on Sunday that the call by the Palestinian Authority's official media uh, for a day of rage violates that pledge. That's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the, the anger is provoked not by any order, not by any call by, of anybody. And Mahmoud Abbas didn't ask the Palestinians to carry out a day of rage. It's very clearly Israel that is provoking and inciting the Palestinians through its own actions. And it is unfortunate, but this is not just a reaction that is, you know, a, a reaction of a group or another. This is a popular reaction by individuals. This is not organized or orchestrated in any way, shape, or form. Israeli policies and measures on the ground are a matter of policy and ideology, including their insistence that we recognize uh, Israel as an exclusively as a Jewish state, including the whole concept of uh, uh, annexing Jerusalem, transforming its character, its history, its culture, its holy sites. All these things are happening, and they are pushing the Palestinians beyond endurance. These are ordinary Palestinian people who are reacting 
to this extreme provocation. And if Israel wants the Palestinians to be quiet, then it has to stop all its unilateral measures and it has to accept the requirements, the imperatives of peace, recognize international law, withdraw from the occupied territories. That's the only way there will be peace and quiet. Dr. Shrawi, back in September, Israel appropriated something like 400 hectares of land uh, in the Etzion settlement block that was near Bethlehem. And they did that shortly after the Gaza uh, ceasefire was agreed to. Yeah. At the time, I spoke to the Israeli Foreign Ministry spokesman, Paul Hershen. I asked yeah. him at that time, you know, under what authority the Israelis did that. And this was his response. I want you to take a listen to it, and then I have a question for you. There was zero annexation of any land. There was zero uh, uh, building permits applied for, and there were no building permits granted. There was no construction that has started, and certainly no construction that has ended. Uh, and, and all of this on a, a relatively small piece of land in an area that uh, everybody, including the Palestinians, uh, understands very well is going to be incorporated into Israel when we reach an agreement. So that was the Israeli explanation. <laughs> Yeah, we have a saying in Arabic, sometimes the explanation or the excuse is worse than the crime. The, all settlements are illegal. All settlements are considered by the Rome Statute and the International Criminal Court as being war crimes. By the Fourth Geneva Convention, all settlements are also considered war crimes, illegal and must stop. We even have court rulings from the, uh, the court advisory ruling from the uh, International Court of Justice in The Hague about settlement activities and the building of the wall and so on. Nobody understands anything. When you surround Jerusalem, when you try to divide the West Bank into separate units by building massive settlement blocks on Palestinian land, when you steal Palestinian land and you bring settlers illegally to live in these lands and you say, well, these things are going to be annexed anyway and the Palestinians should understand that. No, we don't understand that. And we do not accept any kind of retroactive legality to illegal settlements. So, I mean, there is no excuse. A crime is a crime. And this is a violation of international law and this is a direct blow to the chances of peace. Dr. Hanan Ashrawi, thank you for joining us.